Hey, it's Chuck Lyons, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can search the headers for a given text and find, um, return back the columns that they're in. Uh, I find this useful because I'll, I'll pop open a data file, and let's say um, the, the one data file email will be in the first column, but the next one, next time I open it, it's in um, column D, or you know, it's, it's not in the same spot. And, but I want to be able to filter on, or I want to identify, search it, and I need to, of course, first identify what column it's in, and then go, you know, look for it. And so that's what this function here does. Um, of course, we have to first connect to Excel, and that's what this does. Um, the function is down below, but you can go ahead and watch the other video about that. I'll include it in the script. But, uh, but for this, I'm not going to review that. This is, I'm calling the function here, and so I'm saying, hey, let's go look in the headers. And in this, I've hard-coded to say, where is it? See, right here. Um, just look in the first row. And, of course, if you wanted to tweak this a bit, you could tell it the, the row you want to look in um, as the header column for whatever table. But uh, but then you're going to, of course, um, well, no, actually, you would still be able to get the used range. But anyway, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. So um, typically when I open a file, of course, the header is the very first thing. And um, what I'm doing is I'm passing it an array. So here you put it between brackets and then, quote, comma delimited. So... It's going to look for email, it's going to look for country, and it's going to look for age. And um, then, of course, this is the function call. And it, after, when I call this, it's going to pop down in here. It's going to pass the, to the, the handle to the Excel file and this array. And I first need to, I'm going to create an object to store the key value pairs. Uh, to create the object for storing, let me add that here. Key pairs of search term and column, well actually it's location, because I append the, um, the one there just so I have it handy. Again, it's hard-coded, right? And that's what this one is doing here, the same as that one. Those are both referring to the first row. And um, <coughs> so after I define it, then I'm, I basically I use a for loop to search over um, the, the search terms in values, and this is my array values, right? So this is going to be the first time it'll be email, the second time country, the third time age. And I'm going to loop over. This This is another function I'm referencing just because um, it's in my library. And I'll make this available as well. But um, So I get the count of how many used columns there are, and I'm going to loop over it. And so each time this A index is going to increment up until, in this case, there's... Uh, Let's see, that's five, so six six columns. It's going to loop over this six times, and it's going to check. It's going to say, hey, in this, um, the first row, in the first column, and so I'm using this as a number, and that's what simplifies iterating over the columns. Um, see if the value there equals the search term I'm looking for. It's the first time it's going to look for email, second time country, third time age. If it does, it's going to put in um, store in the headers object, as the, here's the key, which of course this time it'll be email, it's going to store, and here I convert this column to a character, um, that's another function that I've, I'm leveraging from my library, I'll include it in the main script, but um, for, um, I would say put these in your library and that way you don't have to worry about it. But it's going to return the, the, um, the index, and this is converting it to a letter, an alphanumeric, and that way, um, that's why this is the column to character, right? So I'm returning um, what column, so it's A, B, C, in this case, the first case it'll be A, right, column, and then I'm hard-coding it to one to the first row, just again, because I just want to have it return the first one. Um, and after it's all done, really, I just like tightening it up, but this, you'll see, this is really here, right? It loops over each one of these, and then it goes to the next one, next search term, and finds it, and then finds it, and then returns that. But since I can, I put all those on one row, um, and when it comes back, it's going to return, so see I'm returning the object, and so this is an important point. I'm returning an object, I'm going to store it here in, in LOC, which which if we show you here, um, LOC, I'm going to save this, reload it, launch it, one means it is an object, right? Um, and that's what that was doing there. And I can access the object by this format, so I would put back in, notice here's email, and that's there, country, that's there, and age, actually I should, just to keep it consistent, whoops, age, um, so that is going to be um, that one, and it's going to show me, when I call it this way, it's going to return the value stored there, 
And so when I run this once, and this is just a line break, I could, I just wanted to make it simpler to read, but if I do this, um, so there, now when I save this, reload, and launch, it goes and does all that and returns emails in column A1, um, actually column A, column country is in column E, and age is in column C, right? So yeah, that country, yep, that all worked. And I'm just, of course, hard coding the one. That way I can reference it later. Uh, especially if after I do this, that's when I would say, hey, I want to filter on email. And so that way this can return back A1. Oh, I want to filter on column A1, right? So it's a very handy thing to be able to do. Um, and when you when you have this function, right, all you have to do is pass it the things you're looking for, and remember to use it in this format when you get it back. Of hey, that's it'll be stored um, in in this key value pair under in this case location, right? But I could change loc to whatever I want. It doesn't matter. All of this is internal in the scope of this function, and so outside I could actually I could still call this headers um, if I wanted to because it's outside the function and that. Um, would work just fine, but you do have to store it. And uh, that's it. Thanks.